Hi everyone, I'm Garab. I am a senior product manager here at MongoDB. And uh, today I want to talk to you about data modeling, and more specifically, I want to talk to you about data modeling using our developer tool suite. Um, and the focus today is going to be with uh, MongoDB Copilot extension, which we announced, which Melissa announced this morning uh, at the keynote, uh, as well as the MongoDB for VS Code extension, uh, which has been out um, and is, is, is one of the more beloved um, tools that we have among developers. So for today's talk, we're going to base it um, off the context of building this application called Borrow Blazor. Uh, don't worry, it's not a real app. It's an app that we made up. Um, and Borrow Blazor, you can think of it as a support tool admin app for a ride-sharing application. Um, it has some key features like Trips Overview, which has uh, you know, things like total revenue, uh, total rides, etc. Has some analytics graph um, of average fair charge uh, to see some fair trends. And then more specifically, it has this little uh, widget here at the bottom that displays all disputes of, uh, of type fair. So that means the customers effectively disputed the fair uh, of their ride. So before we jump into building the application, I just want to set the three phases of this talk. The first phase is going to be setting up a local Atlas CLI cluster um, using, um, sorry, local Atlas cluster using Atlas CLI. The second phase is going to be about data modeling using the Copilot extension and MongoDB for VS Code. And the third one is going to be optimizing that data model using Compass and Copilot. So first, setting up the local environment. So to set up the local cluster, I'm going to use the Atlas CLI, and I'm going to pick the local deployment. Once I hit the local deployment, I'm going to pick the default cluster because there's nothing fancy that we want to do with this. And when I select the default cluster, it's going to start spinning up the cluster in the background. Uh, and I'm going to skip connecting to it for now. The reason we want to use Atlas CLI for spinning up a local cluster are effectively uh, two folds. One is as your engineering team scales or you know, as your engineering team is working on your application, you want to typically make sure that they're working off of a similar production build. And the best way to mimic Atlas production cluster uh, locally is to use the Atlas CLI to do a local deployment. And this doesn't just end with local development, it's also about CI. Whenever you have a CI pipeline or test pipeline where you're uh, running your test against an Atlas cluster, you typically want to have a, a, a setup that is reproducible, and that's what the local, Atlas CLI local deployment gives you. So the next part, now that we have our cluster spun up locally, I want to go ahead and talk about data modeling. And before we jump into data modeling, I want to first think about our access patterns. right? So. The first access pattern here that we want to build that feature that I showed you earlier is to get all disputes where the dispute type is fair. And the second access pattern, which is a little bit more complicated, is uh, related to dispute investigation. So I want to compare fares of trips with similar origin and that had traveled similar distances. And these are the two data sets that we have at hand. One is trips, one, the other one is trip disputes. TRIPS has fields that you would typically expect off of a, a TRIPS data set, such as TRIP ID, total fare, pickup location, drop off location, and one special field called checkpoints, which is an array where we periodically upload the geolocation of the ride. And on the TRIP dispute side, it's a small collection of status, assignee, dispute type, dispute reason, um, and that's it. So as you can see, both trips and trip disputes have a one-to-one -one relationship. And they're kind of, when we are faced with the situation, we have two options. One is to go the embedding route, and the other is to go the referencing route. If we pick to go the embedding route, where we embed one data set into the other, uh, there are some pros, like having a faster read performance. But it also comes with, a, with, with some cons, like uh, MongoDB, as you know, has a 16 megs document size limit and you, you want to make sure that you're not exceeding that document size limit. If you go the referencing route, all of a sudden modeling complex relationships become much easier, but it also comes with the downside of transactions being a little bit more difficult, um, uh, not difficult, but rather a little more complex, 
And compared to embedding, your read speed all of a sudden is uh, comparatively slower. And one thing that we usually say when it comes to data modeling for MongoDB is data that is accessed together should be stored together. So with all these things in mind, I'm actually going to go ahead and embed the trip disputes data set into the trips data set. And the reason I'm doing is uh, doing this are, um, there, well, there are three reasons. One is uh, because the trip disputes data set is contained and I know that it's not a very large data set, the risk of hitting that 16 meg limit is all of a sudden much lower. Number two is typically when I access um, trip disputes data, I also want to access the trip data at the same time. So following the rule that we have at the top, data that is accessed together should be stored together. We want to keep those two data sets together as much as possible. And then the last one is we want to make sure we're optimizing on the read speed because this query is going to be run every single time that our support team is uh, launching the, the home page of this application. So we want to make sure as soon as they you know, hit the URL and hit enter, the page loads as fast as we possibly can. So now that we have our cluster set up um, and we have our data model figured out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use MongoDB for VS Code uh, to load some mock data into my locally deployed cluster. So in this case, more specifically, we're using the Playgrounds feature in the VS Code extension. Um, the Playgrounds, uh, Mon Playgrounds are effectively a full-fledged node environment where you can write JavaScript code. And here I'm just extracting, unzipping uh, a zip file, extra extracting the JSON file within that zip file, and then inserting the mock data into the database, the local database that we deployed earlier. And I'm going to create some indexes that I'm going to use later when I'm building my query. So here, I'm quickly refreshing to make sure that, um, well, that was a little bit quick. But um, I'm, I'm just refreshing to make sure that the data set was populated, the indexes were created. So let's reset the context back to this application, and more specifically, focusing on the fair disputes part. So as, if you remember here, the way to populate this feature is to get all disputes that are open right now um, that are of type fair. So in order to model this query, I'm going to lean on uh, MongoDB for VS, uh, sorry, MongoDB Copilot extension in VS Code. So over the past few months, we have been working very closely with our partners um, at VS Code to build this extension, and I'm super excited to announce it today um, uh, in its public preview state. Uh, you, can think of, you can think of the MongoDB extension as kind of like supercharging Copilot with MongoDB specific domain knowledge. So the things it can do are uh, if you type in qu uh, a query in natural language, roughly what you want the query to be, it's going to produce the actual MongoDB query for you. You have access to MongoDB documentation within Copilot. So on the back end, we will rag uh, with the latest doc MongoDB documentation. So we're giving you a response without having to leave your IDE uh, about any MongoDB documentation question that you have. And lastly, you, it has deep knowledge about your database structure, so your collection schema, et cetera. So you can interface with it and talk to it as if it's a, a I don't know, like an assistant. That's, that, that's how I would, I would describe it. So in order to model the first access pattern, uh, I'm going to lean on this extension now. So the way it works is when I'm in VS Code, I will open up the Copilot chat, and in order to call the extension, in the chat uh, text box, I will write at MongoDB. I'll specifically call the slash query command, and I will write the query that I want, which is I want to get all trips with dispute type there. And here, as you can see, it gives me a run button, which uh, then runs the query that it, it has outputted. And to make this integration happen, we had to deeply embed the Copilot extension with our Mongo, existing MongoDB VS Code extension. The access, so access pattern two is a little bit more complicated than access pattern one. Um, and the scenario here that we have is, let's say our support team received a dispute for a ride starting from Javits Center, which is in New York City. Um, beautiful place, by the way, if you've not been. Um, and Javits Center has the following coordinates. Let's say the passenger traveled roughly around 16.77 miles, and the total fare ended up being $80.28.
So in the context of the application, this is kind of how our support team would look at it. Um, on the left-hand side, they would see an average fare for a similar ride that is being disputed. And on the right-hand side, they would see the actual fare for that ride. So to come up with the query for this, uh, I'm once again going to lean on my Copilot extension. Um, and this time, because it's a little more complex, I'm going to try to work with it step by step. So I'm going to build an aggregation step by step with the MongoDB Copilot extension. In the first step, I'm going to call out MongoDB, once again, the slash query, query command. And I'm going to say, give me all rides that roughly started with the same geolocation as Java Center. And then it's going to generate that stage for me. And for the second stage, what I want to do is I want to filter for rides that travel similar distance from that origina originating location. So the similar distance being within 14 and 18 miles. And here, it has added one more stage from aggregation, which is to filter the, filter the distance. And now finally, on my third stage, I want to make sure that I compute the average costs for all of these rides that started from same location, travel similar distances, and what is the average. So here, I'm opening this in the playgrounds, uh, in the MongoDB playgrounds. And I'm going to just review the aggregation because it's quite long and complicated. Uh, and I'll make sure that it looks good. And then I'll hit run. So when I hit run, I see that the average total fare is 13.13, whereas the actual fare that the uh, customer incurred was $80. So obviously, this gives my support team um, a heads up saying, hey, this is a dispute that you may want to investigate further. So just to recap what we covered so far, we have evaluated some access patterns before diving into data modeling. We have used MongoDB for VS Code to connect and populate the DB that we deployed, the local cluster that we deployed. And finally, we have prototyped and tested these queries with the help of the Copilot extension. So the last phase is <clears throat> optimizing the data model. So, use, so th in this phase, we're going to use Compass and MongoDB Copilot. So if you will, take a trip with me down the future, a couple of months in the future. Let's say our application is in production. It's being used uh, by our support team. And I'm just all of a sudden finding myself in Compass, just browsing my data that we have so far. And all of a sudden, I see an insight pop up. And the insight says, large array detected. And the large array detected is specifically referring to the checkpoints array that I spoke about earlier, which is uploading periodically uploading the latest geo checkpoint uh, to this array. <clears throat> and the insight specifically says, as arrays get larger, queries and indexes on that array field become less efficient. Ensure your arrays are bounded, bounded to maintain optimal query performance. So I don't really know what that means. This is the first time I'm ever encounter, encountering this insight in Compass. So I'm just going to go to my IDE and talk to my Copilot assistant, more specifically the MongoDB uh, extension uh, in Copilot chat. So I ask, what do I do if Compass is saying a large unbounded array has been detected in my data model? And, um, and more specifically, I'm using the docs command to do this so that you know, uh, Copilot is able to go into MongoDB docs and then figure out exactly what Compass is trying to tell me. And the first option here actually looks pretty good to me. It's saying, hey, just separate, separate out the large array into a separate collection. And the reason why this made sense to me is because, number one, unbounded arrays have the potential to make sure that every single subsequent queries that you're writing, even if it is not related to that array, could potentially be slower. And in this case, the checkpoints array is not something that I'm going to use every single time my home page is loaded. In fact, I only need the checkpoints array when my team knows to do a secondary dispute investigation. So this is not an array that I need to access all the time. Therefore, I can totally feel free to normalize it into a separate collection. So now we want to change this data model. Once again, we're going to go back to our friend, uh, MongoDB Copilot extension. And I say, how do I normalize the checkpoints array in my database into its own collection? And here, it's going to give me a query to do just that. I take a look at it. When it makes sense, I'll open it in Playgrounds, take another good look at it, because we're doing a write operation at this point. Um, and once I verify that looks good, I'm going to go ahead and run it. I'm going to go to my database, refresh my cluster. And then I can see that there's a new, brand new collection called Trip Checkpoints.
And when I look into a document, I can see that it has the trip ID with it and it has a checkpoint with it. So the normalization seems to have gone well. So now that the checkpoints array is normalized into its own collection, I want to make sure I remove the checkpoints array from my trips collection so that you know, we don't have duplicated data everywhere. So in order to do that, I'm going to pick up right where I left off with the Copilot extension. And I'm going to ask, how do I unset the checkpoints array? And it will give me the query to do just that. I will highlight it in Playgrounds. By the way, in Playgrounds, very, very, very handy uh, tip. You can write as many queries as you want. You can highlight them as a block and run them one at a time. So it's a good way to store your queries. So once I've unset the checkpoints from my trips collection, I'm going to go back and make sure it just uh, happened and, and it did it the right way. And looks like we don't have the checkpoints array anymore in the trips collection, which is great. Uh, I'm going to skip this part. I was going to show you how to do that in Compass as well. But um, due to time constraints, I'm going to skip that. Um, so why really optimize this data model, right? Like, why go through all this effort to kind of you know, rejigger our pre-configured way that our collection was set up? Um, when your application is very small, you won't really feel the difference. The difference will be in the, in the milliseconds, right? But as your application grows and scales and you have more data points, you're really going to see the pain point of having, slow, uh, having a suboptimal data model. So in this case, I'm going to revisit Access Pattern 1 just to show you a, a quick benchmark. And Access Pattern 1, if you remember, it was about uh, getting all disputes where the dispute type was fair. I've reconfigured our local cluster to have this configuration where I bumped out the wire, uh, wire tiger cache size and then bumped up the number of documents and the average size per documents just to show you uh, the impact. And I ran a quick um, explain um, before checkpoint normalization and after checkpoint normalization. So before checkpoint normalization, we had roughly around 524 milliseconds of execution time. However, after checkpoint normalization, we all of a sudden have around 22 milliseconds, which is over a 23x gain it, just by changing our data model. And there's some further ways to improve it, like you know, pre-computing average checkpoints um, and, and average fare and storing them. But um, this is just one way. Optimizing a data model is just one way to, to tackle this issue. So to summarize, key takeaways are uh, if you want a first-class, consistent local development as well as CI development experience, you want to use Atlas CLI local development mode because it mimics your Atlas production cluster um, in your local and CI setup, so you are having the most consistent experience. Second one is considering your access pattern upfront before you jump into data modeling. Or oftentimes, we just say, OK, I just want to get this feature off the ground, so I don't want to think about data model until I hit a pain point. But consider your access patterns upfront, because it may be just as simple as um, you know, deciding between embedding versus referencing, depending on how your access pattern uh, patterns are set up. And number three is, uh, if you use Copilot in VS Code today, uh, which some of you may, some of you may not, consider leveraging the MongoDB extension for Copilot because it allows you to all of a sudden have an assistant in your IDE that you can go back and forth with. It has domain knowledge specifically about MongoDB, and we are working with the team at VS Code to uh, together evolve this thing into, uh, into something that's great and very useful for you in your MongoDB development journey. And the last one is leverage Compass and all of our DevTools suite to kind of assist you with these proactive performance insights. Because once you hit production, then it's a, it's a, whole, different, uh, it's, it's a whole different game, right? Like when you hit production with something slow, your customers get affected with that. Then you, have to, then you have something deployed in production that's harder to change. But if you use proactive performance insights that your, your developer tools give you, or, or the MongoDB dev tools give you, it's easier, and, and you'll spot these issues before you hit prod. And that is it. Thank you for, uh, thank you for listening. <laughs>